We found that in some parts of the country, patients who had living wills were less likely to die in the hospital and more likely to receive comfort care in a hospice setting in their final days. Having a living will can be a helpful way to ensure that you receive the types of treatment you prefer near the end of life. Another important result of our study was we did not find differences in probability of receiving life-sustaining treatments in the past six months of life for patients with and without living wills. Combined with our main result that these patients with living wills were more likely to receive hospice care near the end of life, we believe our findings suggest that patients with living wills are more likely to receive hospice care after there's been a recognition that these life-sustaining treatments are no longer working. And the third key point was we found that Medicare spending was more than $5,000 lower for patients who had a living will. However, this was only true in the highest spending regions of the country where practice styles favor much more aggressive end-of-life care than other parts of the country. This suggests that it can be important for families and physicians to talk to patients about end-of-life preferences, both to ensure that patients receive the type of care that they want in their final days and to potentially save some money in the Medicare program. It's important to note that this difference in spending is, is only a small fraction of total Medicare spending in the last six months of life. and policy reforms aimed at changing treatments near the end of life and encouraging use of living wills should be motivated by respecting and ensuring patient preferences and not as a way of closing the Medicare projected funding shortfalls. In this study, we used survey data collected through the Health and Retirement Study, which is a large nationally representative study of older adults collected by the University of Michigan. In addition to survey responses from patients prior to death, we also had follow-up interviews with their next of kin conducted after death and administrative Medicare data from their treatments covering the past six months of life. This was a great data resource that allowed us to provide some new evidence on a question that has been a puzzle in the earlier literature about whether living wills actually can impact treatments provided near the end of life. While previous studies have used data from only a few hospitals or one or two states, we are able to collect a nationally representative data set with multiple years of data and over 3,300 patients followed. And having these types of data resources allows us to tackle some important policy-relevant questions that can't be done with a lot of other types of data.